Hello everyone, here's another film I want to address for some time, and now that time has finally come. Let's start with Wachowski's 2008 Live Exhortation 1967 anime, Speed Racer. The film opens in the hammer that alters between Speed, played by Emil Hirsch, and his younger self, played by Nicholas Elia. While not the best student, as noted by its teachers, he has great enthusiasm for car racing. This is also noted by his father, Pops, played by John Goodman, his mom, played by Susan Sarandon, and his older brother, Rex, played by Scott Porter. As we're on the racetrack, I really like this bit in the Mach 4, one of the film's counterparts to the Formula 1 car variant. Just so they hit the pick jump, the film shows speed leading everyone at the local racetrack known as Thunderhead. Watch out, case having just come off the Matrix trilogy, use what they learned there to adapt the anime and manner that embraces the absurdity of the concept. Use a technique of the digital backlot, live actors against chroma key, the take the original. And the 67 TV show used to make virtual futuristic take on the series, gravity defying cars and kindergarten hues abound. In his own Formula 1 variants, the Mach 6, Speed is going after the ghost of a brother Rex and Moison 1, who's at the regret Thunderhead, race when Speed is still a kid. Also, watching the race are his younger brother Sprite, played by Polly Litt, the pet Chimchim, played by Adam Matrix, William Kinsey, and Speed's flame, Chris Trixie, played by Christina Ricci. Apparently known each other since they were kids, I show my flashback to her younger self about Area Winter. I really like how this movie re tries to create a lot of same editing camera techniques to what's seen in the anime. Get the time I grew up in, saw the show, and summoned all at least all three major kids in the syndication. Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, and Cartoon Network. Imagine that. Some of the announcers, including late anime VAs Peter Fernandez and Corinne Orr, use as transitions. As time passed, Rex eventually left Rich Motors forge his own path, leaving Speed in the Mach 5 and leaving his family on bad terms. He also apparently dies in an accident in a cross-country race known as the Costa Crystal 5000, which we'll come back to later. Speed wins the race in the opening, but decides to preserve Rex's record as the last moment, moment to honor his memory. This movie, on top of being right for Easter eggs to the source material, also contains a brief parody of Fistle North Star that inspired the engineer watching at breakfast time. As a mechanic, Sparky, played by Kit Gurry, remarks on who Speed will race for, everyone is confident he'll stick with the fan that raises motors. Just then, E.P.R. and Royalton, played by Dennis Jesse Hammy Roger Allen, tries to court Speed into joining his team, up in Miles' lifestyle, even a tailored suit race for him. The sequence of Royalton Industries also sets up many key plots that will be interesting soon. As well as the company's racer, Chitung Grand Prix winner, Fighting WRL champion, future Hall of Fame member Jack Cannonball Taylor, played by Raph Hareforth. Speed asks for time to consider, and Royalton agrees. We then cut to Tejo Togocom, played by actor and K-pop star Rain, being tagged over a crunch of Block, played by John Benfield, doing his best impression of Tom Wilkinson. Block was one of the more notable antagonists in the anime, and his transport is own version of the Mammoth Car. Tejo is nearly fed to Block's piranhas when the car is intercepted by Rachel X, played by Matthew Fox of Lost Fame. I really like how the scene is handled. Both cameraman David Herzl, as well as VFX professor Sean Gaeta and Dan Glass, did a fantastic job introducing X before he even starts speaking. Especially like how they introduce his car, the shooting star in this movie. Though Tate is reluctant to turn on block, X gives him the authority's number. <sighs> While Speed contemplates racing Royal 10, the latter turns out to have ulterior motive with fellow company Musha Motors and with their head played by Hiroyuki Sonata. The day comes to Royalton's offer to speed, which brought in Shimpton sneaking on board the plane and dipping into the candy supply. The speed is tempted, he reads a story about what happened after losing Rex. Speed has indeed been deeply invested in recent since he was very young, one highly being Grand Prix match between Ben Burns and Stickleton. However, Royalton's idea of racing is much different. The big ladies have a long and shady history, up to and including race fixing. Royalton himself has demeaned that it would be the envy of Bobby Kodak and Tim Sweeney alike. Elsewhere, Spider and Chimps are also joy riding in a tram while listening to Freebird, simply upon an illegal device known as a spear hook. Well, unfortunately, the cop has occurred amusingly, and she was credited as Dara Phase, according to Cam's on my DVD. Speed ultimately declines to sign Royalton, but Royalton retaliates by conspiring with a blog at the Fujiha Lexicon race. Totaling the Mach 6 and having racing motors accused of IP infringement. They're not in that exact order in the film. I do give the editors credit for taking an unconventional approach to recreate the anime's flow on film. Mm. 
On top of speed being met by Burns by Richard Roundtree of Shaft fame, is encouraged by his parents given a second chance by ex Inspector Detective played by Ben Furman. However, this involves racing in the Casa Cristo, which is a reputation for jackholes, headhunters, and thugs. As well as Rex, the cross country rally is well known for death, so much so that it's also known as the Crucible. Against Pop's wishes, Speed openly agrees to join the race alongside X and Taijo, seeing he's going skiing as a cover. Classic. The day of the race arrives and spans two continents, three climates, and 5,000 kilometers of road. Spud also tries to hide his watching the race by switching to a German program, but Pops is fooled. On top of the race, qualifier here being for the Grand Prix, there's also another factor involved. Stock Royalton and Musha taking for Togo Car Motors and to provide key information both Royalton and Block. However, several other racers are indeed being paid off to take out their team, while the crazy outfits and modified cars being just shy of Dexley Mutley in these wacky races. One of these is Snake Oiler, a key race from the anime by Christian Oliver. The Mark 5 is a little modified, it's a little playing field by X's and Lover Minx, by Mania Wallace. <sighs> The Queen of Casa Cristo fires a starting gun at sunrise and races off. When several stragglers are taken out right away, Speed and X are able to outmaneuver most of their opponents out of the city in the Nubian desert. The stake oil is in the lead, Speed and X are able to work alarmingly well together. On that note, the race itself is quite impressive, and this section of the film is definitely my favorite part. It's a big love letter to the original anime, much as the movie itself. The first day of the race concludes at Cortega, and the hotel is one of the only three practical sets built for the film, and alongside the racer home in Wilton's office. Speed's family has been found out about what happened, and those a tense argument, they all come to agree and finish where they started. That day, hit us proud on everyone, with Heijo being poisoned, but actually able to fight off his attacker, then said after Speed is fought by the whole family, including Pops. It was a client that included his background as an ex-wrestler from the anime, showing by his class ring. Hmm. <sighs> Since the toxins partially paralyzed Teijo, Trixie decides to race instead, and while Teijo and his sister Haruko play United set traffic control block, the class will take all these team on the mountain pass. Actually quite impressed as fight this is this fight near the peak with Puncher's gang. Our many adaptations before and since have never really gotten the big energy of the source medium. It's clear the filmmakers understand what they're adapting and write down like Gleep will be a part of it. Conjure's thugs are arrested, and now there's only one path to win the race. Maltese ice caves or Rex didn't make it out. The last of Snake's henchmen crash out of the race and Snake himself starts to trip up speed when it looks like hidden in his car. Speed nearly falls off the cliff, but he drives back up thanks to Mach 5's modification and Snake crashes out as speed wins a race. Really love how the film recreated this image from the intro as speed across the finish line. Mm. However, it turns out that Toa Khan not had his own motives. It wasn't to prevent the buyout, but to increase the benefits of the merge from early Royalton. Needless to say, Speed isn't happy and this leads to a brief but actually quite effective race at, with X at Thunderhead. This sets up how the film adapts a classic of the trick race, which showed Rex behind the mask. Speed doesn't recognize him. This isn't the end of the story. X then tells him he needs to figure out what motivates him to keep racing. So he hopes that he's there when he does. Speed and Pops reconcile and Hargo give Speed the invite to 93rd Grand Prix in her brother's stead. In just 32 hours, family builds in Mach 6 and Speed takes part in the race. Among the other drivers, Rutt has a 1 million man bounty put on Speed's head. Speed must face Cannonball, who is driving the prototype to your ex. This is another car, which is primarily in the anime, and the purple and gold is a nice touch. Hmm. While other live action adaptations have often struggled to translate the unique visual style of anime on film, this final race is a major example of embracing with gleeful abandon, candy colored cars and racetracks abound. This is the same techniques they employ with the Matrix series. I will get to the rest of those too, which also got crafted and intricately choreographed on a most art known as Car Fu. That's not a joke. Video game confirms this, and it's actually quite good. It's basically like Speed Racer version of F-Zero or, or Wipeout. Speed bobs and weaves through the rest of the field, with only Cannonball left in his way. Two trade paint and Speed shouts, Get that weak shit off my track! There's your PG rating, folks. <laughs> Cannonball shoots a spear hook into the Mach 6, and as Spider calls it out, Speed uses the jump jacks of the car to catch it on camera and free himself. GRX crashes out, and as the Mach 6 stalls, 
Exactly, just says to just listen to her. This is part of what I mentioned. Speed is able to kickstart the Mach 6 by shifting the fifth gear. She jets across the track. He recalls all that brought him here, causing the last two racers to crash into each other head first. As Royal 10 breaks down, everyone else cheers. He quite early burns rubber and chooses in a first place finish. Yowza. I can only imagine what that looked like in IMAX. Before we head to Victory Lane, we see why X can't go back to his family. Not only was his death covered by the agency, he had cosmetic surgery to help protect them. So not in the exact same sense of the anime, but the one concept being a spot takes person over being a racer. We close and speed up bringing his win. Teachers to find in court, and Royal Tim being jailed on the headline, Cheers Never Prosper. Credits on rules and really good multilingual arrangements of the original theme song. Though, mm. so, time and audiences have been kind to the movie. We, at the time, was only panned by critics a little more than 135 minute version of the show with all the puppies of CGI, which technically isn't wrong, but still. The film cost $120 million to make another $80 million to market with a mass motion place. I still have some of the Hot Wheels models I put out. Despite hate the Wachowski being first off hits the Matrix franchise, as well as Corey and co-producing me Vendetta, uh, the film opened number three behind the first Iron Man and remained a comedy What Happens in Vegas. Yes, the film ultimately made just $43,945,000 and $766 X dollars in the US, with wide numbers bringing in just under $94 million. Success, The Dark Knight later that summer made so Warner Brothers would take more than a decade to even attempt their adaptation of Japanese IP or families again. That said, the film definitely got its audience DVD, and over time, the cult following took hold. Looking back over the years, the film is no more absurd than other big budget blockbusters at the time and since. Its influence has been other films such as Tron Legacy and Scott Promotions of the World. Some live action anime straight to Front of Source Revolution, and others don't really understand how to make, make the, the material work with a different medium like Netflix's Death Note or 2017 Ghost in the Shell. Even I lead a battle angel, it's been improving in many ways. It's felt less like an anime to me. More like a dystopian YA film wearing the anime skin. In Speed Racer, however, there is a commitment to making unapologetically absurd. Roger is a love letter to the famed anime, and Wachowski has delivered that exactly. I've been advocating for this film since 16, I'll continue to do so. It's not perfect, but it's underrated film when they work. My final rating is 3 out of 4. Whatever I cover next, I look forward to sharing with you all. Go, Speed Racer, go. Mm-hmm. <laughs>